Welcome, I'm Pastor Matt, and I want to invite you to join us tonight for East Richland Friends Church's online Advent celebration. Now, for the past four weeks, we've been celebrating Advent, which is a word that means coming. We're celebrating the coming of Jesus Christ. Now, for the past four weeks, so far we've focused on the hope that Christ brings, the peace that he leaves in our hearts, the joy that he gives because he is with us, and the love that he shows, not only in coming down to earth, but also in dying and ascending back into heaven for the forgiveness of our sins. Tonight, we celebrate Christ, the Emmanuel, God with us. Now, we're going to be joined by Pastor Jerry, our worship team, Pastor Brian, and several others tonight. I invite you to sit back, relax, and if you feel the need, please call in or message us online to talk to one of the pastors at the church. And Merry Christmas. And let there be peace, peace to every nation. Let there be hope for all the world to see. And let there be love and joy to all the children. Let there be peace on earth for you and me. one wish on my Christmas list. It wouldn't be for presents under my tree. There'd be no more tears for crying, no more wars for fighting, and every mother's child would have enough to eat. When I get down on my knees to pray, I ask the Lord above to light the way. Let there be peace. Let there be hope for all the world to be. Let there be love, joy to all the children. Let there be peace on earth for you and me. When I look in the mirror, all I want to see is true compassion looking back at me. I wanna, I wanna love my neighbor. Be the hands and feet of Jesus. Take his love to the least of these. And all I'm asking is to be the change. When I get down on my knees, I say, let there be peace. Peace to every nation. Let there be hope. For all the world to be. Let there be love. Joy for all the Let there be peace on earth for you and me. Let there be love. Let there be hope. Let there be joy for you and me. Let there be peace. Let there be love. Let there be joy for you and me.
Christmas church family. We are so excited to have you in your living room, in our living room, just singing together. So we're going to continue to worship together. We hope you sing this great hymn, Angels We Have Heard on High. Let's sing together. of the stable. Hail, hail, the newborn king came to save those that believe on the name Jesus. Let's do one more together. Here we go. Put your hands together if you want to. Get you clapping in your family right there.
As we celebrate Emmanuel, God with us tonight, several of our church family members are going to join us and tell us about their journeys as God was with them. Let's listen in as Kelly and Jason Duvall join us and tell us about their story of God with them. Hello, church family. This is Jason and Kelly Duvall. We just want to give you a little testimony for your Christmas Eve tonight. Um, it's going to be focused around my diagnosis of breast cancer earlier this year. Um, I was diagnosed in May. Uh, May 6th actually was the day I was diagnosed, a uh, day I'll never forget. Um, we were uh, at the doctor's office and they immediately made me have a biopsy that day, told me that day. Um, I actually felt uh, calm that day which because I knew I was leaving it all in God's hands. We both knew, we both prayed immediately after being uh, diagnosed. So... Um, called all of our family to let them know um and i just just went off of my, one of my favorite scriptures philippians 4:13. um i can do all things through christ who strengthens me um that's a big one for me yeah. what about you babe uh i just think the biggest thing is is through the process you you have your days where you're just down it's, you feel like you can't go any you just can't go on and during those days at that time, that's when I would just go to myself, either driving down the road at work or whatever, and just be still. Just stop and listen. And at that, uh, on you those even days. You heard a song on the radio one day. Matthew those, West, uh, Matthew truth West, be told. Matthew West, truth be told, just, <laughs> it's just, yeah, you always think that you're supposed to have it in control, and that song just came through. And it just seems like always on those days, it's something would happen. A song would come on, a phone call from somebody you haven't talked to. Like an unexpected card in the mail. Yeah. Yeah. It's just. We've had so much support from church family, so our family. Um, we've just been very blessed throughout this whole process, and it's almost over. I have two more chemotherapies, and then I'll start radiation. Um, getting through it day by day, and I'm going to beat this thing. So. Yes. <laughs> And I've had the best husband with me right right by my side, for sure. But that's um, that's pretty much what we wanted to say to you this evening. We hope you enjoyed it. And um, we know everybody's had a rough year. This yes. has been one of the weirdest years ever. Um, and we hope everybody got through it unscathed. And um, God bless everybody, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. see a star shine and its splendor fills up the sky it's the same that appeared in the wise men revealed 
fear when hope was born this night. Out upon the snowy field, there's a silent peace that heals, and it echoes the grace of our Savior's embrace, because hope was born this night. Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill toward men, let all the world sing a chorus of joy, because hope was born this night. I can hear the Christmas bells ring, as softly a church choir sings, it's the song used to praise the ancient of days, when hope was born this night. There are angels in this place, and my heart resounds the praise. Like the shepherds so scared, I'll rejoice and declare that hope was born this night. Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Let all the world sing a chorus of joy, because hope was born this night. Welcome back, church family. Now let's listen in as Allie Stewart tells us about her journey and how her faith has been impacted as God has been with her this past year. Hi, I'm Allie, and this is my story. So I've seen God move like in all of my life, but I'm going to focus in on 2020. And there was a time in 2020 where I was like, I kind of want to delete that or get me out of this. Like, this is crazy. It's awful. But... Now that I see it for what it is, I, I see that in the pain and in the suffering and in the hard times, God was there through it all, and he knew what he was doing, and all I needed to do was trust him. And so, kind of before corona hit, um, I was living overseas for a year, and I had my ministry there, and I had my people there, and I kind of had my life started there, and I was ready to go. And because of corona, that kind of got ripped out of my life, and my life got flipped upside down. And so, it's, it's kind of crazy to say this, but I got back home and I was like, I felt like I had no purpose and I felt kind of hopeless and I felt alone. I felt like I didn't have any, communi any community and I was so focused on the things that I had lost and I slowly, it took a long time, but I slowly got to see God move and, and he gave me my community and he showed me that I have community and, and he showed me ministry opportunities and he gave me new ministry opportunities and so I got to see him moving in the physical, but I also got to see him moving in my heart, and he changed my heart um, and showing me that I already had community in front of me, my friends and my family who love me so much, and the ministry that's all around me, just everyday people and being a joy and being a light and loving. And, and so I got to see him move in the physical, but also in the spiritual in my heart and to change my heart perspective from looking at the things that I didn't have to looking at the things that I do have and that he's already given me and just having a heart of thankfulness and gratefulness and just, yeah. Um, so it's been really cool and I'm excited for this, this new heart change of just like moving forward with God and, um, 
and yeah, getting excited for it. So yeah, Merry Christmas. like to introduce you to John and Lindsay Holmes. They're going to come together and tell us their story about their struggle and how God was with them as they faced it together. Hello church family. We are John and Lindsay Holmes and when we think about God with us we are reminded of two verses in the Bible. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 and Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6 where God speaks about never leaving us nor forsaking us. And when we think about God with us and never leaving us nor forsaking us, we are definitely reminded of our journey and our adoption of our son. So Lindsay and I have been married for eight years. We've been together for 12. Um, like most young couples, when we first got married, we had the desire to start a family that wasn't part of God's plan for us. Uh, we had a lot of doctor visits, 
a lot of negative test results and a lot of unexplained infertility issues that the doctors weren't able to explain to us. That caused us to start living for the world and at some point you have a wedge between us. But the cool thing about God is he does have a plan and after some time we felt the call and we came back to church. Uh, this time we met some new friends. Uh, he brought Matt and Sarah close and their children into our lives and he showed us that it was possible to love children that weren't biologically ours. Uh, Matt and Sarah and their kids became an answered prayer to us. Uh, we started to feel the call to adopt. We spoke with our family about it. We talked to Matt and Sarah a lot about it and got some good advice from Matt that there was never a good time to do anything, so just do it now. And that's what we did. We started seeking different routes. We ultimately were connected to a local girl through a friend of a friend and she needed, she was pregnant with a baby, needed somewhere to take it in, and we became those people. A uh, lot of ups and downs during that time frame. Uh, the, her landlord that had us connected uh, kept us in touch with her for about a month, and then we lost touch with her, and we lost touch with the landlord until we got a phone call that she lost the baby. She lost the baby. I didn't even know what that meant. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. We couldn't believe it um, that we had gotten this far and only to find out that we were lost again. We didn't understand why God would bring us here again, bring us this far, and then just that happened. And, and we were grieving it, because we had already fallen in love with this child. So the roller coaster and the ups and downs of our journey did not end there because the next day we found out that she had not lost the baby but indeed had gone into labor eight weeks early. So we just kept following God's lead and kept trusting and going one step at a time and two days later, our beautiful son was born. He was born early, so he was in the NICU, and again, this isn't exactly how we thought it was going to go. Um, this isn't how we pictured it, but of course, it was God's plan and not ours, and once we held him in our arms, we knew, we knew he was ours. We knew he was the one that God had meant for us to raise. All the heartache, all the tears, all of it just it all made sense so the next five weeks we spent in the NICU with him and it was still tough there were still some you know ups and downs but we just kept taking it one step at a time kept trusting God and following his lead and we just felt his presence with us the entire time we had a nurse pray with us we had another nurse who just wanted to do a random act of kindness and she found us and knew our story and wanted to give us a gas card so it just was it just was amazing I mean we felt God with us the entire time and so when we think about God with us we know that he was with us the entire time and the journey to our son and all of it just made so much sense once it all came to a head and, and it was God's plan and not ours So this is a really long story that we had to condense down to a couple minutes. Uh, something that we're comfortable talking about. If anybody would want to talk or have questions about it, uh, it's not something we're hiding from him. So if anybody has any questions, just grab us after church anytime. Um, we know this has been a tough year for everybody. We hope you can have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.
just crying out from a sea of hurt. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. Can you hear the angels sing? This year's theme has been Headline Jesus, and I love that. He is the good news. Tonight I want to focus in on God with us. Scripture says, In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. I love that phrase, the Lord is with you. As I read that birth narrative, I found that phrase standing out to me. I, the Lord is with you. Thinking about how important that has been in my life, the knowledge that God has been with me. Multiple testimonies have been shared tonight about God, how God has been with them. But how about you? Do you have the assurance that God is with you? In our text, in Matthew 1.18, it says, Joseph has become aware that his bride-to-be is pregnant. And he knows this is not his child. One can only imagine the pain in his heart. One can only imagine the betrayal he is experiencing. One can only imagine the confusion and how alone he must have felt. Believing his heart that he'd been betrayed and abandoned by the one he loves. Right away, this good man, Scripture calls him a righteous man, or good man, he's conflicted. The word there, considered, in that wording, we find that he was weighing this heavily on his mind. 
You've probably been there before. When something just rolls in your head all night long and all day, and you just can't seem to get past it. I'm sure that's what was happening to Joseph. He's a godly man with the utmost respect for the law of God. And he could, by rights, extract a pound of flesh for this hurt and pain in his heart. But he loves Mary, and he doesn't want to do that. So, in his humanness and compassion, he determines to divorce her quietly. So with a broken heart and overwhelmed with disappointment, his marriage-to-be is going to be ended before it's even begun. In the process of making this decision, Joseph experiences the loving care and compassion of a great God who loves him very much. In his own wisdom, he has it all worked out. But Scripture says that after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Joseph, maybe we can put it this way, God is inviting him to be a part of his great redemptive plan. <laughs> this is a divine calling. God is enlisting him to be a part of his salvation history. This is all a part of God's redemptive work. All of this that is happening to Mary and Joseph is all of God. So the message from God changes a heart from, the, from a decision of divorce to a trust in the plan of God. See, what we have here is God declaring his salvation plan. Uh, Joseph doesn't have to be afraid. He tells him not to be afraid. He says that she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Notice the Lord gives him the responsibility of naming the Christ child. You are, he was the head of the home. He would name him uh, Jesus. And that name, the word name there, conveys the idea of conveying an authority. And the authority that Jesus, that Joseph was giving by giving Jesus the name of that name will save his people. That's the authority. Jesus was coming for a specific purpose, to save his people from their sins. <laughs> How powerful is the name of Jesus? No other name. Scripture says salvation is found in no one else. For there's no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Jesus is our Savior. 1 Peter 1, 18 through 21 says, For you know that it is not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you redeem from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, the Lamb without blemish or defect, he was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your, so, for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. This child's name will be Jesus. There's something awfully sweet about that. The sweetness of his name. In the Greek form, it means Joshua, and, uh, and it means the Lord saves. Isn't that incredible? God enlisting Joseph to be a part of his great redemptive plan. All other world religions, men are seeking after God. But it was all about God reaching back to us, to redeem us, to give us hope, to set us free from the guilt of sin that is ruining our lives and ruining our eternity. Scripture says that even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus will save us from our sins. Isaiah 59, 2, the great prophet says, But your iniquities have separated you from God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so he will not hear. Just as sin separated Adam and Eve from God, so our sin puts a barrier between us and the Lord. Romans 3, 22 through 24 says, This righteousness comes from God through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe, there's no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All of us are sinners and are justified freely by the grace of God through his great redemptive 
son, Jesus Christ. Scripture goes on to say, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word has no place in our lives. I hope you understand the sin problem we have. And apart from Jesus, we are lost. 1 Timothy 1, 15 through 18, here is a trustworthy saying. Paul, describing his own life, says that saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners, of whom I'm the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his unlimited patience and his example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Paul understood his sin problem. Then we come to that final statement. We have a sin problem, but here's the great news. God is with us. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord said to the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and you will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. The Lord reminds Joseph of the words of the prophet Isaiah, words in which he announced 700 years before that there would be the birth of this child. I believe that light goes on in Joseph's heart. As God reminds him of the prophecies of Isaiah, the light goes on. And Joseph knows in his heart he doesn't have to be afraid. He doesn't have to be ashamed. All he needs to do is trust the Lord. And he takes Mary to be his wife. The Lord tells him that God is with us. That break of fellowship that was created by the fall of mankind in Genesis, that sin that separates us from God, those bounds, that struggle has now been broken through the precious blood of Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. Here's the bottom line, bottom line for Saul. Our sin separates us from God, but Jesus has come not only to forgive us, but to set us free from the devastation of our sin he comes to restore us as the children of God adopted into his family. Scripture says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship, persecution, famine, nakedness, or danger, as it is written, for your sakes we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor depth, or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Tonight we celebrate God with us. You know, today, <clears throat> I asked my little son, grandson, three-year-old, I said, you know what Grandpa wants for Christmas? He didn't have a clue. I said, I just want a big hug from you. Pastor Brian reminded us, what is it that God wants from us? He wants you. He wants me. He wants us. He wants us to believe. I love this passage of Scripture. If you declare with your heart, with your mouth rather, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Yes, Jesus is calling us to believe in him. He wants you to confess your sins and be forgiven and set free from the bondage of it. And we need to ask the Holy Spirit to fill you, to take control, and to guide your life. God's word becomes the roadmap for our life here on earth in anticipation of our great eternal kingdom that we'll be able to share with him in. I want to encourage you tonight, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ, to pray to receive him in your own heart. Confess that you believe in him. Confess your sins and seek his forgiveness and ask the Holy Spirit to come into your heart. As you are watching this video, some of us pastors will be waiting on the phone lines. If you want to call into the church phone number, uh, we will be glad to talk with you. Uh, 740-695-0971, that's the number to call. And we will talk and pray with you 
uh, and share with you the hope we have in Christ Jesus. God bless you this Christmas. Have a wonderful celebration with your families. But remember this, God is with us through his precious son, Jesus Christ. God bless you. you to grab your candles now as we celebrate uh, together tonight through the lighting of candles. Uh, we've been talking about God with us. And that's exactly what uh, God is, has done for us. He is with us. Matter of fact, he is not only with us, he's in us. He is the light of the world. But for anyone who has chosen to place their faith, their trust in Christ, he is the light in you. You and I, we, together, we shine our light for Jesus Christ in this dark world that we live in. And so with me right now, I invite you to light your candle with me as we, together, shine our light together. Silent night. Holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child. Christ 
shine our light in our world that others may know Jesus he is with us as we close tonight's service I just want to say thank you for joining us and Merry Christmas. But I hope this isn't just an end for you. I hope it's a new beginning. I hope that tonight you encounter Jesus Christ in a way that you hadn't before. That in his birth you've seen the Son of God come down so that he could die on a cross for our sins. Raise from the dead. And of course prepare the way for us to ascend into heaven. Now, if you would like to start a relationship with Jesus Christ or you have questions, I want to encourage you just to contact us here at Friends Church. Uh, our phone lines are open even tonight. Or, of course, you can always come and visit us on Sunday morning. I pray that you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.